each and every single one of us is facing a challenge here or there. Usually we call them giants. But remember that no matter what you face in life, your God is greater than that. My name is Theophilus Lamte and I welcome you to the Theophilus Lamte Ministries. Shall we say a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we want to thank you once again for this opportunity. We don't take it for granted at all. Not everyone that goes to sleep wakes up in the morning and feeling good in their bodies to move around as we have. It is a, another opportunity that your children will gather and hear your word. We pray that your spirit will take preeminence of whatever we are about to say. We rebuke every act of carnality that whatever word will proceed out of my, my mouth will be one that is seasoned with salt, one that is ordained for the benefit of your children. And at the end of it all, we'll be careful to give you all the glory, honor, and adoration in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Today we are about to study a very interesting topic and I give it a title, Facing Your Giant. In life, everyone has a giant. The giant might be the job you are seeking for, the marriage that you are in, that you are having issues, or the marriage that you are about to enter. It could be family problems. It could be health issues. It spans in so many directions. So whatever you are battling, it is a giant in your life. And we are trying today to bring to light some points or some pointers as to how we should approach and deal with the giants that we meet in our lives. And today we are going to use the story of David and Goliath when the Israelites were supposed to fight the Palestines. And this time the war dynamics was changed by one man called Goliath. I'll give you a brief history about the story and at the end of the day we will bring it to light about the four points that we need to be able to fight our giants because it is something we cannot run away from as believers we will fight giants one way or the other in different forms and shapes so to begin with this are the israelites at this time they were being led by saul after the israelites cried out unto god that they needed a king like the other people saul was introduced into the scene and saul became their king usually they have their wars where they prepare their armies and go and fight their enemies but this particular time the philistines which was spearheaded by a giant called goliath decided to change the war dynamics which was contrary to how the children of god which were the israelites have been used to all these years this time what goliath said was choose ye a man and give me a man so that if this man is able to contest with me, whoever wins has defeated the other nation. So if Goliath won, then the Philistines have won. And if whoever represents the Israelites won, then Israel has also won the battle, which was very strange because the armies were supposed to fight together. And at the end of the day, whichever army was subdued will be the one to lose. But this time it is supposed to be an individual. And it was so strange, but Israel had nothing to do about it. And Goliath, if you know a little bit about him, was a giant about nine feet tall. His armor that he put on himself weighed so much that it was practically impossible to fight someone like that. And Goliath had been a warrior right from his infancy. And this is the kind of person that was introduced to represent the Philistines. And now... Israel was in a fix. Everybody, including the tallest man at the time, which was Saul, had run away and gone to take cover. The whole garrison of Israel was protecting Saul. That means he will be the last person to die if the Philistines should pursue them. This was the kind of king that the, the Israelites were crying for. And God warned them that this person you are crying for will bring you challenges at the end of the day. But they were adamant they just wanted a king. And God reluctantly asked Saul to be their king after Samuel anointed him. You realize that the anointing that Samuel gave to Saul was a partial anointing. Samuel anointed Saul with a vial, 
which represents partial anointing. But when it came to the time of David, he anointed David with a horn. The horn signifies permanent anointing. That one will be for another day. So as I just gave you the preamble, this was the situation at the time. And the king who was supposed to be the leader had run away. And nobody was able to come to fight Goliath for the rescue of the Israelites. So Goliath had been standing there in front of the people and ranting and shouting and calling them names. And nobody could come to the rescue of Israel. It got to a point where a man called Jesse sent his son to go and feed his brothers at the battlefield. The name of this son was David. So David had been a shepherd for some time. He's been in the wilderness and he was taking care of his father's sheep. And in the process of taking care of his father's sheep had gone through a series of events. So you will see how the series of events that David had gone through in the wilderness affected how his life turned around at the end of the day. No wonder the scriptures say all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. I can guarantee you that as long as you love the Lord, no matter what you go through, the good, the bad, the ugly, everything will gel together for your own good. At the end of this message, you will realize that David, no matter what he went through, was actually fitting together to bring the puzzle to a perfect end. So like I was saying, David now goes to bring food to his brothers on the battlefield because nobody was able to come and face Goliath. And people have been there at the battlefront for so long a time they were beginning to starve. And Goliath was still standing there and raging insults at the people of Israel. This young man comes and realizes that there is something going on and he begins to talk to his brothers and tells the king that why is this man abusing the children of God and I want to fight this man. Everybody thought the guy had lost his mind because he was just a minute figure relative to this nine feet giant who had been a warrior all his life. And Saul even makes it clear to him that this man you are going, you decide to go and fight is somebody who has been fighting from his infancy. So he's well skilled in the act of fighting. And you are just a shepherd boy. What do you know? And then David begins to play his profile. He told the king, my king, when I was in the wilderness, a bear came to attack my sheep. And the Lord helped me to kill the bear. Another time, a lion came to attack my sheep. And the Lord helped me to kill the lion. So the same God who helped me to kill this giant and he actually called him an uncircumcised Philistine. This was the kind of man that decided to go and fight Goliath, David. He was a young man. He has gone through a lot of challenges in the wilderness. And like I said, he had gone through the cycle of able to defend his sheep from a bear coming to attack them. And another time it was a lion. And he gave credit to God. The question is, where was God when he was fighting the bear? Where was God when he was fighting the lion? But this young man at that, lit, at that young age understood the dynamics of spiritual warfare. He knew that battles are won in the spirit. So if God was not on his side, there was no way he could have won those battles. So although he was physically doing the act, he knew that there was a force that was backing him. And that is the spirit side of life. And that was the same principle that he was bringing here. Funny enough, every single person, including the king, Saul, operated differently. They were all carnal, so the devil managed to be able to defeat them. Whenever you give the devil a chance to operate in the physical, you lost the battle. The physical is where the, bat the devil operates. So what the devil actually did for the Philistines is that Prior to that particular war, they were always used to praying to their God and God directs them as to what to do. They were winning the battle spiritually. So the enemies, which were the Philistines, realized that, no, if we don't take care, this thing is going to repeat itself. Let's change the dynamics. And the devil went through Goliath. And Goliath said, no, instead of praying to your God, for your God to direct you and win the battle for you, this time bring a man physical. I am one man, so bring one man and let's face each other. And at that point, the 
Israelites lost their spirituality. Everybody was running helter-skelter, looking for a man that can match the caliber of Goliath. They scanned through the whole of Israel and they could not find anybody because the enemy managed to bring them to the physical. Whenever we engage with the enemy without the backing of the scripture, we are reducing ourselves to the physical. And when you enter the physical realm, the enemy will win. The devil is a specialist in the physical. So he brings Goliath, and the title I gave is Facing Your Giant. So Goliath was a giant physically. What giants are supposed to do are supposed to bring intimid intimidation. Their aim is to intimidate you because of their enormous appearance, because of the, the kind of space they occupy in the realm of the physical. It is meant to intimidate the child of God. And that was classic of what Goliath did to the Israelites. Everybody saw him and they were afraid. They looked at his height and his physique and everybody ran away. That is what the enemy does. So whenever you are facing your giant, remember that the aim of that giant is to intimidate you. When you get intimidated, you lose your self-control. When you lose your self-control, that confidence you have in your God will disappear. Before you realize, you are finding ways and means in the physical to be able to fight. Israel could not pray anymore at that time. All they were thinking about is who will go and stand against Goliath. And they've been doing that for hours and nothing was happening. And Goliath was ranting and screaming. And he was just talking. And everybody in Israel was dead silent. He was speaking and the words he was releasing, as we all know, are spirits. So whenever he released the words, the words are caught up by the Israelites and then fear enters them. Fear is the trusted weapon of the enemy. So when the enemy presents that giant, the next thing he will do is he will begin to release words. Because you are already intimidated, your spirit is open. So whenever he releases his word, you will catch it. And when the words enter your spirit, you begin to act accordingly. That was how come everybody was running, including the king, Saul. So Goliath started making noise. I will break your head. I will do this. But there was nothing recorded about Goliath demonstrating whatever he said. He never took anybody to break the neck. He never did anything. All he said were, I will do this, I will do that. And the Israelites were afraid to death. These are the strategies of the enemy. So remember, he will bring a figure in the physical, something so huge that your mind cannot comprehend. And the aim is to get you afraid, to get you intimidated, to get you to begin to lose your self-control. And once he accomplishes that, the next thing is you begin to speak words into your spirit. And when you receive the words, you are in trouble. Israel was in trouble, but... Contrary to how the Israelites were behaving, this young man appeared in the scene, David. He never ever looked at the physical structure of Goliath to determine how the battle will go. And that was the difference between the Israelites at the time and David. Immediately he saw what the situation was. He was so furious in his spirit that how can this man begin to insult God's children? God will deliver this one to me as well. He never said, I'm very skillful, so I know how to fight. No, he said the same way that God delivered the lion to me and delivered the bear to me, he would deliver this one to me as well. Glory to Jesus. And can you imagine, Saul could not fight the enemy. David appears on the scene to fight the enemy. And now Saul begins to give david guidelines as to how he should go about the fight this is my question if you knew how to fight the goliath in your life why were you hiding and if you've been hiding and somebody has volunteered to go and deal with the goliath why then do you begin to give advice as to how he should operate strategically if strategy was what could win the battle i I think Saul should have been the one to go and fight because at the end of the day, he gave his armor to David to use. If the armor was what could kill Goliath, why was he hiding? Brothers and sisters, 
let us be very careful about the people that advise us the very things we are trying to do the people we are taking advice from are not able to do it so that fasting you are trying to engage yourself in that prayer life you are trying to get committed to that church activity that you want to get so committed to that service in the house of god that you want to get so much attached to be careful who is advising you against it be careful who is advising you about how to go about it the question is if they could do it why didn't they do it this man is not fasting but he wants to advise you about how you should fast this man is obviously not a praying person but he's advising you about how you should go about your prayer life if he knew how to pray why wouldn't he be praying if he knew what fasting and prayer could do why is he not doing it or why is she not doing it but when you are doing it to be able to deal with the goliath that he had not been able to deal with he beginning to give you advice that was what saul was doing saul said young man come this is how battles are won in this era in this uh, dispensation where we find ourselves you need to put on an armor cover your head with a, sh a, a helmet wear a shield hold this one and do that and do that so that you protect your left right and center david was obedient to what saul said he got himself clothed in the armor of saul he took the first steps and realized that no i'm not able to move i don't i'm not feeling free my spirit is not at ease it was then that he realized that, no, if I'm not careful, this king who is not able to fight what I am going to fight would give me a wrong strategy. Then he reverts back to his old self. He said, no, this is how I've been doing it when I was in the wilderness. And if God was able to operate with me in that same style, I don't think it is the right time to change it. Why do you change a winning team? This is the same team you've used in the preliminaries. You've qualified to the final. You get to the final and you want to change your team strategy. You are going to lose the battle at the end of the day. God will never train you and make you change it at the end of the day. The training he is taking you through is preparing you for that launch pad to your destiny. My brothers and my sisters, Goliath was the launch pad into David's destiny. All the prophecies, everything that had been said about him was about to manifest after he met Goliath. So when he was in the wilderness, when he met the bear and the lion, God was using them as tests for him to build trust in him that his dependence is absolutely in the hands of God. That was why he was able to meet Goliath and face him. So he gets ready to go and tells them that no, now... I want to go the way I've always been used to. I want to go the way of my sling and my stones. And listen to me carefully. God had trained David in a particular way, like I said. With slings and stones. This is Saul making David wear an armor and a sword to go and fight Goliath. David is never skilled in fighting with a sword. So that was a suicide mission even from the beginning Saul wanted David to fight the way he knew how to fight Saul wanted David to fight the way Goliath was expecting them to fight because Goliath was dressed in a warrior's regalia he was having his sword and his shield so he's telling you that when you are coming come in that same fashion but brethren make sure that the devil will not define how you should deal with him you will deal with him on the basis of how God has trained you to defeat him. If you yield to the instructions of the enemy, you will fail brutally. And this is the mystery. The battle between David and Goliath was supposed to be won by David from afar. God had trained David to win battles from afar. But Saul was trying to get David to yield to the face-to-face -face battle, which Goliath was an expert. And mind you, there was no rule and regulation about whether you should come close to fight or you should be separated to fight. The thing is, fight. However you fight, that is it. So how do you wear an armor and a sword 
to a battle that is supposed to be won from afar. And that was what the enemy was planning. So if David had yielded to the tricks of the enemy, what Goliath represented and what Goliath was expecting the children of Israel to do, David would have also gone with the sword and he would have lost the battle. But he said, no, I've never been trained for face-to-face -face battle. I've been trained to fight from afar. As a spiritual person that God is raising you, as children of God, the strategy that God gives his children is to win the battles from afar. So we win the battle in the spirit. No wonder the Bible said to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So the moment you become carnally minded, you are dead. Saul was carnally minded in the sense that he wanted to operate how Goliath was expecting him to operate. And no wonder he had to run away. And David was operating from another realm. That was why he said, God will deliver this one to me. How did you expect David, that small figure compared to Goliath, to talk like that? David was a spiritual person. He could see beyond. He had foresight and oversight. He could see beyond what any other person around was seeing. Even his own brothers were insulting him that he's, he's like that. He's always trying to do things that he's not been called to do. But when God prepares the platform for you, for your destiny, nobody can make that take away from you. I declare to you that whatever opportunity that God is bringing your way for your next level, for your next destiny may no agent of the devil from within your own family or from outside ever cause it to pass by you you will be able to do it because of the training you are yielding yourself to now whatever you are going through now is preparation for that opportunity david never knew that he being in the wilderness was going to build him up for the day he would defeat goliath and this was a world assignment. Everybody in the world was about to hear this news. Is it not interesting that in the days of our training and, and our trials and challenges in the wilderness, nobody sees, nobody hears about it. Nobody heard about the days of David in the wilderness with the bear and the lion. No, it's not even interesting. But it will only come worthy to become appreciated on the day that you win that battle that will announce you to the world so brothers and sisters don't be in a hurry to get known god will design that opportunity for you to get known david never went to announce himself to anybody but because he yielded himself to the opportunities god brought his way in the wilderness as a form of training when that opportunity to announce him to the world came he took it and bam david was all over the place his praises were sung everywhere in the length and breadth of the country after he defeated Goliath. So today we are talking about how to face your giant. And we just said the first thing that one of the things that the enemy does is that he will bring a figure in the spirit. Whatever he will bring will look so enormous, will look so gigantic, will look so big and the aim is to intimidate you. If you can see beyond that one, the battle is already gone most of us are not able to see beyond i pray for you today that may god open the eyes of your understanding may your mind begin to see far and above if all you can see is what is surrounding you you are short-sighted in the realms of the spirit it's an advantage to see beyond what is in front of you I pray that God will give us that grace from today to be able to see beyond. Because if you cannot see beyond, when the devil presents that picture, you would automatically give up. David never gave up. Immediately he saw Goliath, he changed the paradigm. He said the same God. The same God. So, one, no matter what is in front of you, no matter the giant the devil presents in front of you, Remember your God. Remember your God. And understand that the test that he has taken you through was preparing you for this assignment. Whatever you go through is for a purpose. So point number one, remember that whatever you go through is not bigger than your God. Project your God bigger than the Goliath in front of you. 
project your God bigger than that giant in front of you. Your giant can be unemployment. Your giant can be ill health. Your giant can be lack of marriage. Your giant can be marital problems. Your giant can be possession of demons. Or your giant can be issues in your bloodline. No matter what it is, it is a giant. And I said rule number one, project your God bigger than that giant to make sure that you see beyond the giant that is the only way you will not be intimidated see beyond it see the end of it that is the only way you will not be intimidated understand also point number three that when you are dealing with a giant it's a moment of loneliness it is a one-on-one -on -one affair you see the way the devil did it. He said, no, don't, don't. It's not going to be all of us fighting all of you. It, that, no, that, that time has changed. This time around is one to one. It's me, this giant, and whoever you are bringing. So whatever you are going to see is just me. So understand that when you are facing your giant, it is a lonely experience. It's going to be a one-on-one -on -one battle. David was going to represent the whole of Israel. And Goliath was representing the Philistines. The Goliath at the time was the devil. And then David was in the camp of God. That is what happens to us on a daily basis. That unemployment is the devil right in front of you. But you are dealing with it as an individual. It's a lonely time. That is why I said you need to know your God. At that time, all you will need is God. There will not be anybody there to fight it for you. When you are going through that ill health, that health issue is disturbing you, it is a giant. And you are going to face it alone. How do you deal with it? Are you able to see beyond it? Are you able to acknowledge the fact that your God is bigger than that thing the devil has brought to you? Poverty is a giant. Sickness is a giant. But your mind's eye should be able to see beyond it. No matter the help you get, no matter the advice you get, at the end of the day, the giant is between you and that entity. Your pastor will not be there to fight with you. Your counselor will not be there on the day you are going through that challenge. Your friends will not be there. No matter how supportive they've been, on the battle day, it is you against that entity. No wonder everybody was waiting and David had to get ready to go and face Goliath. It is you against that entity. So understand that you will face your giant alone. If it is a force in your background, every other person is dealing with it on an individual level. Be careful. Just like Saul advised David, your forefathers, your uncles, your aunties, and whoever it is that have not been able to defeat that giant. When you are trying to defeat the giant, they'll be giving you war strategies. Like I said earlier on, if war strategy was what was able to win, why didn't they use it to win? It takes more than war strategies. It must take the hand of Elohim alone. So when you've discovered God and God has picked you up, to deliver your family from that giant, make sure that you stick to God alone and not yield to the advice of the people that you came to meet who are already running away from that entity. In our family, we don't do this. This is the way you do it. If you want to be this, you have to do this. Be careful what you listen to. May we hearken unto God's word alone. And how God raised us from the wilderness, it is that same strategy God will use for you to overcome that enemy. If God has raised you to be a fasting person, don't go into your family and go and be eating anyhow and think you can defeat that devil because your family is always throwing parties. No. God deliberately brought you out of the family, raised you up to be a fasting candidate because of what you need to overcome that enemy enemy if you have become a prayer giant god deliberately raised you like that because that is what you will need so don't let anybody deceive you that oh don't worry this one is not too much of prayer you just have to work hard in school and you will make it no my brother 
if they work if they could work hard why didn't they work hard to to make it whatever god will train you with is what you need but the devil will make sure that you will not use it but be careful not to forget the god that you've served in your wilderness when you know the God that you've served all your life, the God that has raised you in the wilderness and through the experiences you've had, your trust is absolute. You are not wavering at all. No matter the situation that comes, you know your God is there with you. David was not moved. David was not wavering in his faith. He was not shaking at all because he knew the God that he served. And when you are with your God, like I said, you will be a spiritual person. This is what happened. Look at the nine-foot figure standing before a little boy about to enter into battle. This is what the giant begins to do. He realized that this young man is a spiritual person. He's not like the rest of the people that he had been intimidating. Because naturally, this young man is supposed to be afraid of me. So if he's not afraid of me, then he's a spiritual person. He has seen beyond me. I need to also be careful. So instead of David coming to Goliath, trying to flip his sword around and get ready with all the, you know what I mean, get ready for the battle, David changed the paradigm. He took the battle from the physical into the spirit again. He said, the same God that gave the bear to me, the same God that gave the lion to me, would deliver you, uncircumcised Philistine, unto me. Circumcision was a covenant God had with the children of Israel. So the moment David alerted God about the uncircumcised personality, a covenant had erupted so david said it and the forces begin to act because god had a covenant with the israelites he told the israelites to circumcise themselves as a form of covenant with them and you know covenant has got to do with bloodshed and it's spiritual business so the moment david said that every force about that covenant must rise that means god cannot allow david to be killed And David had already been anointed to be a king. So David cannot be killed. Because the word of God will not come and go empty. Whatever God has said concerning your life will come to pass. David had been anointed to be a king. So he cannot be killed. And he reminded God about the covenant of circumcision. So it makes David impossible to die on that day. Every force of the earth will be behind him. At that time, he raised the battle into the spirit. He said, you come against me with sword and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the law. The moment Goliath heard that, he realized that this young man is trying to be troublesome. I brought the battle into the physical that they will look at me and get intimidated. He has carried the battle back into the spirit and has defeated the reason for my presence. I thought Goliath was going to say, oh, look at this young boy. I'll just keep, boot you somewhere and just be free and just get on with my life. He also being a spiritual person from the dark side had to employ other tactics and he began to speak and what he said was he began to curse david with his gods he said i curse you with my gods why do you curse a little boy about to fight you with your gods imagine a 10 year old going to fight somebody like mike tyson who is a professional heavyweight boxer mike tyson would not even have to say anything he would just close his eyes and beat this young man but this goliath began to reply what David said because he realized that David has shifted the battle into the spirit again. He said, I curse you with my gods. That is how powerful words are. David took it to the spirit and Goliath had to meet him there. Going forward, David now employs the skill that God had trained him. The sling and the stone. 
he will not i will not come close to you because that is your speciality in the physical in the realms of the spirit whatever i carry and the force into my hand it carries supernatural force and god backs it the same way my hands could hold the jaw of a lion and break it which cannot naturally make sense whatever i do is spiritually inclined he took a stone put it in his leg he said i said are you you think i am a dog that was what goliath asked him but in the realms of the spirit it was a dog for david so david took his stone and his sling took it round a few times and threw it and the force of the spirit of god pushed that stone penetrated into the head of goliath and he fell down dead david took his sword and cut off his head with it and took his head and went to show it to his king Saul. That was how David overcame Goliath. Any time you come face to face with your giant, take the spirit, take the war into the spirit. Instead of physically arguing and shouting at people, it is not important. Go on your knees, get to some fasting, get to some meditation, read your word of God. Charge your spirit. That is where the battle is won. Don't physically engage your giant. Don't give them attention at all. When you see that chronic disease beginning to shake itself, enter into some time of prayer and fasting. Begin to release the Holy Ghost. Heat up your spirit. Take the battle back into the spirit. When you get into the spirit, the devil will leave you alone. The eagle does not have the strength to fight the snake on the ground. The snake's terrain is the ground. But whenever the snake is trying to disturb the eagle, the only thing the eagle will do is carry the snake, fly into an altitude where the snake cannot breathe. The snake will lose breath and die. And then the eagle will bring the snake down dead. Whenever the devil is inviting you to his terrain, whenever your giant is calling you to show forth for a battle, carry your giant into the altitudes where he cannot breathe. And how you get into the altitude is what I just said. Enter into some protracted prayer. Enter into some protracted fasting. At those realms, the enemy cannot survive. They will lose breath. And you drop them down dead and you move on with your life no matter what you do there is a giant in your life from your background from your society from your country we are all facing giants one way or the other but i said remember every time that no matter the nature of your giant is not bigger than your god because of the preparation you do, the fasting and the prayers that keeps you in the spirit, when the physical giants come face to face with you, God provides supernatural solution every time. So I said, know your God at all times. Make sure you project your God bigger than the physical entity standing in front of you that we are calling a giant today. Make sure that your trust in your God is absolute. It's unwavering. It's not shaking at all. Whatever experiences you are going through now is collectively going to add up to the defeat of that giant on that day because Bible said we overcame the devil by our testimony and the blood of Jesus. If you've not gone through any test, where would you get a testimony from? And I said once and I'm saying it again. Testimony is two words joined together. A test and harmony. When the test becomes harmonious, we call it testimony. So we overcome the devil by our testimonies. By the test that we've gone through that have become harmonious. So David had testimonies from the wilderness. So when he referred God to those things, God must act again. What challenges have you overcome? What tests have you overcome? It is a stepping stone for you to overcome what you are going through right now. I pray for you that God will give you grace to overcome it. No matter the giant that is standing in front of you today, 
as the word of God has come to us, may you begin to employ these tools that we've just discovered. May God give you foresight and oversight. May God keep you in the realms of the spirit at all times. And may you know your terrain where you are strong and don't yield to the devices of the enemy. The devil will always invite you to the physical combat. And if you yield to that, he will defeat you. Stay in the realms of the spirit. That is where there is life and peace forevermore. In Jesus' name, shall we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you yet again for another opportunity to speak your word. We bless the hearts of your people tonight. We pray in the name of Jesus that their hearts will be receptive to this word. I pray for them that any giant that is in front of them, may they see beyond that giant. May they see you, God every single point of their lives keep us in the realms of the spirit and may we not yield to the devices of the enemy from today may our lives never be the same again take all the glory lord and grant us your blessings in jesus mighty name we pray with thanksgiving amen thank you lovely followers i just want to say a big thank you to god almighty for giving us this opportunity each and every single time to come to you with the word i pray that he will keep us in perfect peace i pray for my father reverend kwekwa jiman i pray for prophet nana sarkodie i thank god for their lives i pray for pastor albert pastor martin every single one of them i pray that god you keep blessing each and everyone i pray for Pastor Daniel Lamte is such an amazing person helping us with our Bible studies every Sunday. I pray for the Achimota Fellowship that God will help us to grow. I pray for you, Ellie. I pray for you, Angela. I pray for you, Bernard. I pray for Mamiya. I pray for each and every single person that has been joining. Sabina, I pray for Evelyn. Forgive me if I cannot mention your name, but you know yourself. May God keep and keep on blessing you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you now and forevermore. As always, keep on subscribing to our YouTube channels and keep us in prayer as well whenever you go on your knees. We thank you. We love you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed with thanksgiving.